What's up, FRT community? Uh, another question here coming from Pawan. Pawan wants me to talk about uh, a Swan Gans catheter and how do we measure pulmonary artery pressure versus pulmonary capillary wedge pressure. And can I talk about that real quick? So this is gonna pretty, probably going to be a short video because it's pretty breaks down pretty simply when you understand exactly what a Swan Gans catheter is, also known as a pulmonary artery catheter. Okay, so when you take your board exams. You may or may not see swan gans. You may see pulmonary artery catheter. Those are the same thing, okay? So what a pulmonary artery catheter does is it's inserted into, it goes through the right atrium, through the right ventricle, and is actually placed into the pulmonary artery, okay? And then this connects back, obviously, and we have hemodynamics right out over here, okay? So... The proper placement for a pulmonary artery catheter is the distal tip to be placed into the pulmonary artery. And that allows you to measure and monitor pulmonary artery pressure. Okay, now, what do we do when we want to measure pulmonary capillary wedge pressure? Well, there's a balloon on the end of this catheter. When you inflate that balloon, it is not inflated it is only inflated when we are going to measure pulmonary capillary wedge pressure. It is not inflated while it's in the pulmonary artery. In the pulmonary artery, okay. So it measures pulmonary artery pressure, but the balloon is down. It just sits inside the pulmonary artery, measuring that pressure. Now, if we wish to measure pulmonary capillary wedge pressure, then the balloon is inflated. And this floats the catheter into a pulmonary capillary and wedges into that pulmonary capillary. Now, this allows us to measure pulmonary capillary wedge pressure. Okay? So, the key you have to understand is that when you float that balloon into and wedge it into a pulmonary capillary, what you are doing is essentially obstructing blood flow momentarily. So you basically created a pulmonary embolism, which is why you do not keep that balloon inflated more than 20 seconds. 10 to 20 seconds max. You get your measurement, you deflate the balloon, and you withdraw the catheter back to the pulmonary artery with the balloon down, and it stays there until you are, 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 are going to or wish to monitor pulmonary capillary wedge pressure again, okay? So that's, that's pretty much it. That's pretty much how it works. You just need to understand, I see a lot of questions are probably going to come out of this, uh, especially from a board, a, a board exam question, an MBRC exam, are going to be primarily do you know when and when not to inflate the balloon. You want to measure pulmonary capillary wedge pressure? Inflate the balloon. No more than 20 seconds, deflate it, it goes back into the proper placement being inside the pulmonary artery, which then allows you to monitor pulmonary artery pressures. Now when you're talking about mean pressures for these, you're talking about your PAP, your, mean, your, your pulmonary artery pressure, your MAP, your mean arterial pressure is 20 millimeters per mercury. When you're talking about PCWP, you're talking about 5 to 10 millimeters of mercury. Those are your normal values for your pulmonary artery pressure and your pulmonary capillary wedge pressure. Okay, Pawa, I hope this answers your question. Real quick, less than five minutes. Not very often does this happen in a video. I usually get to rambling much longer than that like I'm about to do now, but actually I'm just going to cut it off. Hope everybody's having a great time off, away from school, having fun. Best wishes, guys.